Hi, I'm Jay Livens with Actifio. I'm here to talk about the evolution of backup software. Having been in the business a few years, it's always interesting from my viewpoint to see how far we've come. If you look at this little whiteboard I sort of pre-draw, we have our production applications in green there. You know, you've got your databases, your email servers, your file servers, your NAS boxes, you name it, you've got it all. And then historically, we've had a backup server, and a backup server was something that set policies and moved data. Now, when I first started many years ago, the big thing was we would take a copy of our production data and we'd move it to tape. Everyone remember tape? Probably still using it. In fact, at the time, the big thing was AIT tape that we're talking. Who remembers AIT tape? Yeah, I do. It was good. So AIT tape, put that on a truck, and we send that to a DR site. Then it was stuck there. Getting it back, got to get the truck back, got to recover it. Lengthy, painful process. But at the time, that was the only thing that was economical, so that's what people did. From there, we got smarter. Backup apps realized, backup app vendors realized, hey, disk is pretty cool, let's do that. So then we moved on and we said, well, wait a second, we don't have to just write to tape, now we can write directly to disk. Now, usually, they kept the same kind of format as tape. So while it was disk that looked like tape, it was still disk. And in fact, some vendors designed disk systems that look like tape, called virtual tape libraries. This also brought in things like a SAN and allowed us to take some of the apps and say, wait a second, we can be smarter how we back up the disk. And so now what we'll do is we'll go directly to the disk and bypass the backup server. This is again, backup app vendors trying different things to think of different ways to use disk more effectively. Then over time, what they realized is that, wait a second, what we should really do is now let's bring up these dedupe appliances. Dedupe appliances essentially take the data that comes in, they look at the various pieces, and they shrink it out by taking stuff they've seen before. So then what backup app vendors did, they said, well, let's use dedupe targets. Now, some vendors make hardware dedupe solutions. So all they are is basically disk systems that run dedupe. Whereas other vendors maybe say, no, 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 I'm backup vendor ISVA, and I have my own software dedupe. And what they do then is they take the data, they still back it up all the same way, still look at it in tape-like format, but then send it down to this dedupe appliance that reduces the storage footprint. So it's continued evolution. But the other piece about that was the evolution of disaster recovery, which the backup apps went through as well. Initially, of course, it was tape, put it in the truck, drive it off. With disk, we could replicate it, but it was hard because replication and maintaining consistency so the backup app knew there were multiple copies was difficult. That's why tape, in many respects, even when I was doing disk, tape was still a preferred method for disaster recovery. Over time, replication persisted, and we then brought in some more intelligence that integrated the backup server with the dedupe environment to allow us then to have the backup app be aware of the different copies. And don't you like my DR site? My DR site is a nice picture that I drew that I think is very artistically pleasant, but also reminds me of my colleague, Gio Tropiano, who happens to be behind the camera today. <laughs> so uh, I would also add, though, that the challenge of all of this is that the data is written, even today, like it was in tape. The data is streamed. We have the data in dedupe format, but it's still written in the streamed format. So what that means generally is that recovery times can be a bit challenging because we want to recover the data in a deduped environment. Well, first we have to undedupe it. Then we have to bring it back to the backup server. Then we have to bring it back to the database server. And only after we completed those three steps can we then access the data. And that is an area where backup apps have continued to try to look for ways to innovate, but truthfully, they're so stuck with traditional ways of writing and storing data and managing data, that's a hard thing to do. The thing you should be thinking about today as well is the cloud. The cloud's another piece of data protection. And the question is, well, do we take the cloud and do we write to the cloud just like we did to tape back in the day that we just put this tape formatted data in the cloud and just leave it there? Maybe, but that then means the recovery penalty or challenges become even greater, you've got to bring it back and then we have to restore it all and all that kind of stuff. So as you think about data protection and the evolution, it's really a question of how can you make backups more efficient, but also how can you make recoveries more efficient? 
And there's certainly many different ways to do that. Some new technologies to think about are things like incremental forever or instant recovery or the ability to dynamically spin up instances in the cloud based off of protected copies or even leverage protected infrastructure to allow you to create new systems that you could use for test dev or you could use for patch testing or other purposes. These are new things that backup app vendors are just beginning to think about and it's something you should be thinking about as well. So when you think about, well, what am I doing with my backups today? Think about what different approaches you might be using and think about how you could be better leveraging the data you're protecting to deliver more business value. Because at the end of the day, people used to think of data protection as simply a sunk cost, kind of like insurance. You buy it, you pay for it because you have to have it and you hope it'll go fire, but if you do, you feel thankful you have it. But what about if you could take that and turn it around and turn it not from something you have to have only in case of a fire, but in fact have something that delivers value. It creates new opportunities for your environment to leverage your data, to leverage or power DevOps, to do more efficient DR testing, to do patch testing, as I mentioned, data analytics. These are things that protected data or copies of protected data can do for you today. So think about data protection. Think about how we've evolved and how your environment will evolve with data protection and with your data copies so that you can get more value out of your protected information. Thanks.